Hello my YouTube friends. Today I'm gonna show you how to make this scene here using nothing but free software. There are free techniques you're gonna need to learn. We're gonna take a simple image and modify it for our use. Then we're gonna animate the image and then we're gonna add the cameras and assets to the scene in 3D. And like I said, everything is free. So we've got a lot to get to. So you know what? Let's get to it. There's just one plugin we need to pull this off. This is gonna let us do our 3D camera effects in the final scene. Here we are on the download page and we're just gonna click go to download in the top right and it brings us up to this install page and we can scroll down here. This gives you all kinds of other information on everything this plugin can do and it's a lot. We're just gonna go down here to assets and we're gonna download the Windows version. There is a Mac OS version as well as a Linux version here for you to install if you like, but we're using Windows Windows, so we're just going to download that. Once we're done, we just need to go to the location of our downloads and we can double click on the stream effects download. We're going to click on more info here. It does this because this is an unsigned program and we want to just click there and then click run anyways. You may also need to disable your virus scan software. It may not install if you have it running or it may give you an error. And once you get to this point, you just click install for all users and then you're going to accept the agreement and click next. And I'm going to install static you may have your setup portable if you do that's fine you can click portable and then you click next and you're just going to want to make sure that this is the location of your obs installation and as long as it is you can go ahead and click install and of course mine is going to fail because i'm running obs studio to actually record this but all you really need to do once you get to that point is click next through everything and then finish and stream fx will be on your system a video about live streaming tools wouldn't be complete without today's sponsor envato place it i use place it in every live stream for my weight screen my countdown timer my branding bumper as well as my logo and my channel banners and even some of the over overlay assets. They have everything a streamer could need all in one place. Now I created my logo in just a few minutes by choosing from one of the designs and then completely customizing everything from the color graphics and placement to the text and the fonts. And that logo can easily be added to all the videos that you can build and use in all kinds of different content that you might create for YouTube, like live or recorded. I absolutely love Envato Place It and you will too. Click the link in the description below and check it out for yourself. Supporting the sponsors that support this channel is a great way to help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. Now let's create our image assets in Pixlr. The links are in the description so you can follow along. The images I used to create this I just found by doing a Google search and checking off images and the search was for rooms or fancy rooms or whatever kind of room you're looking for. In this case I was looking for something that had a TV already in it so I could just resize the TV and use it for my purposes. The only key is to make sure that you put your settings so that they are free to use images even for commercial purposes and that's really easy to do. And this actual image came from some real estate website and obviously they don't care if I reuse it and so I did. We're going to go into to Pixlr and we're going to click new image and we're going to go ahead and select the size of our image which is going to be the same as our stream uh, 1080p. We can name it right up here and click create. Now all we have to do is go ahead and drag that image into our project right here in Pixlr and we're going to click add to current and now I'm going to resize this so we get to see in this view screen exactly what we want to see. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna take this TV out of here and we're gonna make it bigger. So in order for me to do that, I'm gonna select this little lasso tool and we're gonna make it polygon up here in the top. And then I'm just gonna click on all four corners that I wanna cut out here. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. And then I'm just gonna paste it and it pastes it into a new layer, which is nice. I'll select this, then I can move it up into the same location. And then all I have to do is just just embiggen it right here to make it as big as I want. Now you can see it's kind of goofy. It doesn't really give the same 3D effect, but we're gonna fix that in a second. We just wanna make it as big as we want it. Now we're gonna go to edit and we're gonna go to free distort. That allows us to move these edges independently of one another. We'll just shrink this down and I'm just trying to keep this line completely straight and that should keep the perspective relatively normal. 
And there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is probably just move this in here. It doesn't look natural that big or that stretched out. So we're gonna move it in like that to a point where it looks kind of natural. I don't think it needs to be any bigger than the actual fireplace area. That should look just fine right there. And there we go. So now we have our TV embiggened. So we are all set to add the camera. Now we're gonna add the area where we're going to put our screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just change the foreground color. I'm gonna select this box and put in fill and I'm gonna change it. So we're using the rounded edges and I'm gonna adjust the edges up. Now I'm just gonna drag my fill onto the screen here and this is gonna be our placeholder for our little screen thing I guess it would be like a projector thing where it rolls up in I don't know you know what I'm talking about and I'm just gonna rotate it around here and then I'm gonna move it up into the location and rotate it around again and this takes a little bit of fiddling to make sure we get it into the exact right position that we want and it's level and it looks okay and now what we're gonna do is rasterize that layer and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna free transform this so I can push it up and this kind of makes it a little bit squat and we'll rotate it again to get it into the position that we want but it does kind of give us that angle that we're looking for once we actually do the free transform and squash it down a little bit so it looks pretty good now we're gonna select pixels here and that selects everything and this allows us to adjust the color on it if we want we can go in here and we can select whatever color we want and I'm thinking I want it to be a little darker gray and I'm just gonna go up here to edit and I'm gonna fill it and then we can just click apply and it will kind of fill that color in it's a little darker but it really didn't change much that's fine we're gonna to go to effects and we're gonna add an inner glow and you can see what this is doing is it's just kind of giving it a little bit of a 3d effect a little bit of a rounded look it doesn't actually work that well but it does give you a little bit of a 3d outline and that's what I like so now I'm gonna go ahead and make that unvisible and I'm gonna create a box around here I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize the layer. I'm going to select the color white and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and click the fill button and we're gonna fill it and we just have to move it to the top so we can actually see the layer and there we go. So now we have our screen and we can put our shade on top of the screen and that looks pretty good. That actually looks like we've just created a screen in 3D. It was pretty simple. The only thing is that it's of course hanging over our couch. I'm gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow to the screen green top piece there, the little projector piece, so that it gives a little bit of an effect. We're gonna click apply and that looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and select the main scene and I'm gonna use the lasso tool and I'm just gonna cut out this couch right here. We're gonna just click all the way around it to make sure we get the contours and everything looking pretty good. And there we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and paste it into this layer here and we'll just move it into position. And there we go. Now, when we add in our screen and everything, you can see it's now behind the couch, which is good. That looks great. I'm gonna use the erase tool here a little bit and clean up some of these edges. We can adjust the brush size on our erase tool and we'll just simply kind of brush these little edges out here so it doesn't have these weird lines on it. Really simple and quick. There we go, that looks fantastic. So now we've got our screen, we've got our couch in front of the screen, we have our little projector that rolls the screen down. It looks awesome. Now all we need to do is save this out, so I'm gonna go up to the top, go to File and click Save, and we're gonna save the full image out with the screen and everything just like it is, and click Save As, and we can put in the name of how we describe this, and I'm just gonna kinda save everything out because I'm not sure what we're gonna use when we finally get into the edit. And now what I'm gonna do is remove the screen, and we're gonna take a shot without any screen at all in here. And I'm probably not gonna use that because I wanna have the projector in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and save out everything individually just in case. So I can combine it in the next step when we're setting up the video. My goal on this channel is to help people become better live streamers and maybe entertain a little bit in the process. So take a second and leave me a comment down below and let me know how I'm doing. This helps to steer the content in the right direction and pushes YouTube to share this video with a wider audience. Now we need to animate our scene and add some fire to the fireplace. To do that, we're gonna use DaVinci Resolve. It's totally free editing software. There are links in the description so you can download it and follow along. That is the best way to learn. Here in DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna start a new project and I'm just gonna name my project and we'll click open. 
and then we're gonna go over to the edit screen and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag my assets in here. And those are the pictures we saved out from Pixlr. The last one we're gonna drag in here is fire for our fireplace. And I got this the same way I got the images. I just went out and looked for free fire animations. Anyone will really do once you find a free one. Beggars can't be choosy. Next, I'm going to go and I'm going to go into project settings and I'm just going to make sure we're working in 1920 by 1080 with 30 frames per second. And I'm going to click OK on that. And now I'm going to drag the full room in here. And you can see I chose the full room with the projector piece at the top. Then I'll drag the fire over top of that. Then I'm going to drag my screen over top of that. And I'm going to drag the projector image over top of that. And so now we have the full screen green look to it. The only thing we're missing is the couch. But we don't really need to worry too much about that right now. I'll just stretch these out here and I'm going to remove the screen and the flames. I just want to get the flames in the right position. So I'm going to right click on the flames and go to our fusion page. And I'm going to drag my screen in here, the full scene, so that I know where to put the actual flames. And I'm going to Click the transform to add it to our scene. And you can see it puts a little green box over there. Gives us some idea where our flames are gonna be located. I'm gonna go ahead and click shift space and go and grab this DVE. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this scene. So I'm gonna combine it a little bit here. To do that, I'm gonna drag this down. Then I'm just gonna drag this over top of that. And we're gonna drag this up here. So now we have the merge scene. And I'm gonna reset everything. And then we're gonna rotate this around around a little bit using the DVI and we're gonna use the Z point and then we switch over to our transform to kind of move it around the image and we can adjust the angle and you kind of have to play with the transform and the DVE they have two different kinds of ways that they move this around but mainly we just kind of want to shrink this down adjust the size and the aspect move it around until we get it in place where the fire should go and that looks pretty good I'm gonna disconnect this and just set it up we don't need the background screen anymore now when we move over here you're gonna see that we have pretty nice looking little fireplace and it was so easy to get just by playing around with those settings and rotating it and adjusting it a little bit here and there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and export the full scene by clicking the little rocket ship we're gonna go up here adjust the file name we're gonna browse to select where we want it to go and we can just use QuickTime h264 make sure it's 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second and we'll render that out now we're gonna add the screen in here and we're going to animate this so I'm going to right click on the screen and we're going to go and open the fusion page and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this polygon and we're going to invert it and now we are basically going to move our playhead to where we want our animation to end and we'll set this to one screen and now we're going to select the whole screen with our polygon selector and there we go now the screen is missing now we can unselect invert and we'll move our playhead all the way to the beginning and then we just want to shrink up our little polygon section and this is going to add keyframes. So at the beginning, this is how our screen is going to look. And at the end, that's how our screen is going to look. We'll switch back over into edit and we'll click play. And there you go. You see the screen coming down. That looks awesome. That is really a cool animation. We're going to stretch it all the way out. We're going to go into deliver. We're going to change our file name right here. We're going to go to browse and select where we want it to go. We're going to add it to the render queue and we're going to render it out. And that just looks absolutely fantastic. So now we're going to kind of cut off the beginning beginning where the screen moves and we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy out all the locations where the screen's not moving and I'm going to go right click over here and we're going to create a new timeline and what we're going to do is we're just going to paste those assets in here and then we're going to render them out again. So now we have a scene with the animation of the screen coming down and we have a scene where it's just the animation with the screen already down and of course we have the animation of the no screen at all and that's all we're going to need. My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. If you're one of those 80%, please consider subscribing. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. And it's totally free. So thanks. Now the fun part. All we have to do is set up the scene in OBS. Before you bring your elements into OBS, I highly recommend that you run it through Shutter Encoder to turn them into WebM format. I have
have lots of videos where I've shown how to do this and this is already too long. So I'm not gonna show it here, but you should definitely resize your elements using the WebM filter in Shutter Encoder. It's totally free. Here in OBS, we're gonna go ahead and start building our scenes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my camera in here and we're gonna make it a nested scene camera and we're just gonna add that video camera in right here by calling it cam, clicking OK. And we'll select my cam link and I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna just select the size we're gonna use. This is gonna be the same on PC or Mac, don't worry. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add our room scene and we're gonna click the plus under sources and we're gonna go to media sources and we're gonna call this one no screen and we're just gonna add in the no screen video that we just created. So basically, this is gonna have no screen with the fireplace going. We're gonna loop this and click okay. And there we go. So now we have the no screen scene. Now I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to media source and I'm gonna add in the full scene with the screen and we'll browse and we'll select that scene and we're gonna loop this and there we go now we'll go in and add the image for our couch and we'll look for the couch there we go boom now the couch is in front of the screen awesome all that's left is to add the screen animation so i'm going to go ahead and do that we'll click browse and we'll add our screen animation and click open no need to loop it it's only going to play once and there we go we just need to move it down below the couch and there we go so now we have our screen animation we can turn these off and you see when i put the screen animation on i can flip the other one on and as soon as the screen animation is finished it will just keep playing the other one but what we want to do is we're going to go into settings we're going to go to hotkeys and i'm going to set this up so we can easily just click a hotkey so we're going to set the screen on and the screen animation on to one and we can uncheck them both and then when we click the one key it will just automatically run the animation and we're good to go so you can easily put down the screen and keep it on just by one hotkey now i'm going to add my camera in here and we're just going to grab that camera scene and i want to shrink it up and put it in the location where i want it which is going to be this tv screen here we want it to be a little bigger than the tv screen size then i'm going to right click on it and we're going to go to filters i'm going to click the plus and we're going to add a 3d transform and click ok and this is pretty simple stuff i'm going to zoom in a little bit to make it easier to see and you can see you have your top left top right all that stuff and you've got an x and y coordinate so you're just going to adjust the these X and Y coordinates to fit your camera in there. Now you can mouse over these areas right here with the numbers and use your scroll bar on your mouse to finely detail in the actual edges of where you're putting your screen. So if you wanna get those fine details, it's just not dialing it in right, just mouse over the numbers and use your scroll bar on your mouse and that'll take care of that. And there we go. We're just gonna go ahead and move this one in as well. And once you do this once, you're all set. It's gonna look great. It's really unbelievable how cool this looks when it's finished. And it's that simple to set up. There we go. We can zoom out. And now we are in 3D on a screen in this room. So now we wanna put something on the screen. So I'm gonna make the couch unvisible for the moment. And then I'm gonna click the plus under sources. And we're gonna go to window capture. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put TUT on there cause it would be a tutorial. And I'm gonna select that it wants to select all the windows. And there we go. There's the window from Google Chrome showing the shutter encoder page. Page. And now I'm just going to right click, go to filters, and then select 3D transform. And all we have to do is pretty much the exact same process that we just did on our camera. And you can do this with any element, an image, a video, whatever you want. And we're just going to kind of adjust the edges so it fits in exactly where it's supposed to go. The process for this, even though it's a window capture, is exactly the same. Now we just need to add our couch back in there and move our tutorial image to the right location. And there we go so now we've got our couch in front of there we can easily set that up so it will cause the screen to go down with clicking one and then once it's down we just click the eyeball and boom our tutorial is up easy peasy this is the first video in a series in the next video I'm gonna be showing you how to create this transition here 
to take you from one scene to another. For that video, you're gonna wanna know how to create this stinger. So you wanna check this video out so you already know and you're ready to go. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. Big thanks to today's sponsor, Envato Place It. Their links and all the other sponsor links are down below in the description so you can check them out. Supporting the sponsors helps me keep the lights on here so I can continue to make content that helps you. And I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.